Hi everyone. In this video, I just want to talk about how we go about rotating our flower sack when he's going to be doing a big jump, for instance, or some kind of very large scale motion. I had a few students ask me a question essentially about doing the following. What if I were to grab all of his major controls and try to rotate them all at once? All right, so that includes like the arms, the main torso control, uh, the body controls, right? And if I try to grab those and rotate them all at once, I get somewhat of an unpredictable result. I don't necessarily get the character rotating the entire body all at once. And depending on what mode I'm in, if I'm in object mode, for instance, I might get a completely unpredictable result. And there's a reason for this, okay? When I am rotating the controls here, and especially if I am in local mode, each of these controls has its own what we call local rotation axis. And although the world is set up for X to be sort of along this dimension, Z to be along this dimension, and Y to be the up dimension, that doesn't necessarily mean that that is how the controls were created. The controls are created on the basis of how the rigging artist thinks the layout will be most useful to the animator for any given control. And so the rigging artist has the option of creating a different local rotation axis. Here we can see that what we would normally consider to be rotate around Y, which would be green, is actually red, indicating that it's the X axis here. Up is the local axis, um, lo the, or I should say X is the local up axis on this control. Whereas if I were to click on the leg, you can see now that uh, the leg is if I just go into a gimbal here, it makes it a little bit clearer. Um, the leg is green now around that axis. So that's the local up axis on that leg control is Y. Okay, So there is a difference between these ones. And uh, so if I go into, say, select this object, and then I go in and say, select this object, if I start to rotate X now, what is the X axis for uh, this object here, I am rotating technically X on my leg, but I'm also rotating X on this control as well. But X on this control is not in the same orientation. X is around going around the, the waist essentially. So it's rotating around like this while this one is rotating around like this. Obviously that's not desirable. And it's gonna make a bit of a problem when we try to uh, set out our rotations for our character. Another option that exists that I experimented around with and found works well on just an individual pose, but does not work well when you are trying to animate over a series of frames, is an option where you might go in and select a variety of controls, like what I have here. And uh, if I'm in world mode, world rotation mode here, right? I can select those. Right now I'm getting a problem where even though they're all kind of going in the right direction, they're not going at the right amounts. So I could come into my uh, rotation options here, a little hammer with the three buttons. I could set it to manipulator. And what that would do is it's just gonna change where the rotations start from. And while that can kind of work okay for me, like let's just say I started out right there and I would go maybe to frame six and rotate it in this direction, uh, it's going to cause problems when it goes back to the previous frames. I don't know the exact maths on why that's the case, but it does cause problems. So it doesn't preserve the same position that you had, even though it's keyed in. So that's obviously not going to work. So we don't want to do that. All right, so we're going to avoid doing that. So there really are just two ways to do a very large scale rotation for your character. And those two ways are the following. The first and most simple is of course to grab the character by the big control at the base. Because if I grab that, I can rotate that character around all I want. I could have them in this position on one frame and then on another frame I could have them over here. Okay, and that's gonna be fine. That's gonna be predictable. However, as you may recall from class, I have told you not to animate this control. And for the most part, that still holds true. 
That holds true whenever the character has its feet on the ground. Um, and that's because if we move this control while the character has his feet on the ground, the character looks like he's on a slide, maybe like a moving walk at an airport. And if he's sort of making his feet move forward and whatnot, then they don't stay in the right position on the ground. They're gonna sort of be sliding forward. That's an issue that we get that makes the character look like it does not have a good sense of weight. All right, so in general, we avoid doing that, but here is a situation in which you might use it. Let us pretend that we have our character here, right? And let's pretend that this is the edge of a cliff and the character is about to jump down, all right? So while the character is in midair and only while the character is in midair after they've jumped off here, now you could take advantage of this control and animate it. But as soon as that character lands and goes plop, right? Then you would stop using it again. Ultimately, I would, I would prefer personally for the control to be back in this orientation, but it's not absolutely necessary, okay? That's a quick and easy way to make things happen, but it does tend to make you not entirely think about what your character is doing, but it does make things a little bit easier, like, a, like rotations, spinning rotations, for instance, become a little bit easier, etc. So long as you continue to think about what the character is doing on every frame and for every part of its body, then you're probably okay. But because I like full control, when I were, if I were to animate this, I would want to not really rely on my big control here. Instead, I really would go in and I would move things around. I would pick up the character. Um, maybe I would grab the, the legs, for instance with the torso, or actually make sure I grab the legs, I didn't grab it there, okay, grab, 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 okay, so the character might have gone down, and let's grab that upper part there, character might have gone down, a little bit of a squash, and then they jump, right, but as they jump, yes, I've moved all this stuff up, but now I can individually move things around, and there might be a bit of a, a rotation here um, in the upper torso, and the legs might be doing whatever the legs are doing, they might still be sort of pointed toward the ground there, right? And as the character is moving, I might have it, you know, this might be one of my frames here. Let me go ahead and uh, just key that in. And then, you know, a couple frames later, I might have the character sort of in another position entirely. I might just take these guys, sort of move them over here, I might rotate them a bit. Uh, and then I would grab these legs, move them up, bring them over. Right, so I'm kind of physically having to do this on all of the controls um, and keep track of how they're all moving. Uh, but, uh, and, and so that's, you know, that is a little bit taxing, but it ultimately means that I have full control of what's going on here. And, um, you know, it takes a little bit longer, but actually it probably doesn't take any longer. Honestly, it's probably faster this way than if you were to go the other way and you made a lot of mistakes, to be completely honest. So here we have, you can see the character just sort of moving through that jump now, right? Almost like they're jumping through hoops, which is kind of what, that's pretty much the definition of animation, jumping through hoops, all right? Um, so that's how I would approach that. And I would just keep going through and I would, I would pose all of my uh, various actions, all my keys and breakdowns through that jump in this fashion. And then of course, I'm just leaving behind this control here uh, in that case which is really ultimately my preference. So I hope that's of help to you as you consider, you know, moving your character, uh, especially when it has multiple parts like this. Best of luck to you. Thanks for watching.